All right, so what's happening, everybody? It's F Major again, and I want to give you another quick tip about using a machine. Um, this time, we're going to use a machine inside of DAW just so that you get a feel for some of the flexibility that you have with machine and also just get inspired to use machine in different ways. Um, today, we're using Logic 9, and I'm going to show you how to set up machine inside of Logic 9 for like the optimal use, basically. To start, the first thing you want to do, obviously, is open up an instance of machine inside of Logic. So I've already done so. I have machine here on my track, number one, and um, I'm good to go there. I've already loaded up some drums inside the machine as well. Okay, I got some drums. Now, the next thing I want to do, actually, to set up Logic is to go inside of the environment. Um, the environment is where I can create a machine object because Logic likes to work with objects in order to address MIDI instruments and as well as audio instruments. So it's important that I create a, an object so that Logic can refer to that. Um, so we're going to go to the environment here and we're going to go to the MIDI instrument layer inside of Logic 9. Now that I have the MIDI instrument layer open, I'm going to select multi-instrument. Once I create this new multi-instrument, what I'm going to do is enable all of the MIDI channels. So we're going to enable all 16 channels by clicking on each. The next thing I want to do is actually name this. I'm going to name this device machine so that Every time I look at the library of MIDI instruments, I can see machine as an object. The next thing I'll do is change the port setting. The port setting refers to the hardware MIDI ports that are connected to your computer. Because we're using machine inside of a DAW, it's actually not connected to a physical MIDI port at all. It's a virtual instrument inside of my DAW. So in that case, I need to change the port setting to off so that no MIDI signal is being sent to my hardware or physical ports. Okay, so now that I have turned that off and I've set this new MIDI instrument object up, I'm going to open another instance of the environment up. So let's go here to environment again. And this time, instead of selecting MIDI instrument as the layer, we're going to select the mixer layer. The mixer layer will allow me now to route the information from this machine directly to the channel that contains my machine audio instrument. Now that I have these two connected, Logic can now address machine in the same way it would address a physical or hardware instrument like my motif or any of my synths in here. Now Logic can see it and say, okay, that's machine and it's connected to that MIDI instrument or that audio instrument inside. Okay, so now that I have this set up, I can close out of the environment because I have it routed. And it will be a good idea once you get this set up to save it as a template inside of Logic. So you can save this as a template by going to the file menu, select save as template, and then you can say machine logic. And that's my new template now. So I don't have to reconfigure that every time I open up Logic and I want to use machine. The next thing I want to do inside of Logic is open up machine. So we're going to open the machine GUI up. And you'll notice that I have three kits loaded up right now. What I want to do is set up machine so that Logic can treat machine like a sound module or a sound source, basically. And what I have to do inside a machine is use the sound MIDI batch setup. So if I open this up now, you'll see that I have several mapping mode choices. Restore defaults will clear everything. Sounds to MIDI channels will allow me to give each pad an individual channel. Or sounds to MIDI notes will convert each pad into an individual note. And each group will have its own separate MIDI channel. 
So this is the this is the actual setting I want because what I want to do is allow logic to sequence or read the notes that are being played from my machine and trigger um, trigger machine using those MIDI notes. So for group A, I'm going to select channel one and I'm going to leave the root note at C3. I'm going to do the same thing for group B. I'm going to go sound MIDI batch setup. But this time, I'm going to change the MIDI channel to number two because I want each group to have an individual channel so that Logic can address them separately. So I'll do the same for group C now. Sound MIDI batch setup. We're going to change the MIDI channel to number three. So you would do that all the way up to H if you had you know, all eight groups enabled. And each group would have a MIDI channel all the way up to A. Okay, so we'll apply that. And now that I have this set up, I can close out of the machine. And if I create a new track inside of Logic, let's create a new track. Let's create now, instead of creating a software instrument, I want to create an external MIDI because we just set up this object so that we can treat machine like an external MIDI instrument. So I'll, I'll click on create and now you'll see in the library that along with things like Ableton, ATC1, some general MIDI devices, my motif and etc. You'll see the machine has an object now and a machine, the machine has an object with 16 MIDI channels. So channel one, if I select that, that will refer to group A. That'll be the sound of group A. Okay. So now that I have it set up like this, what I can do is instead of recording directly into machine, I can now record the MIDI notes from the controller directly into Logic. So what I'll do is I'll set up my loop here and I will turn machine into the control mode because I want to send MIDI. I don't want to send the proprietary machine data into Logic because I can't really do that. I, I can only send MIDI. So if I hit shift control, that'll take me to the MIDI control mode. And for me, I like to select a general MIDI or like a, a basic setup that allows me to have access over the whole MIDI range. So the template that I would use here is going to be the massive template. You can use the massive or the Pro 53 because that goes across, across the whole span or the key range for MIDI. So now that I have the massive um, set up, if I hit group or group E now in this control mode, that's going to correspond to all the pads in my setup. So now if I want to record directly into Logic, I can do so. Okay, so now the notes are recorded directly into Logic. So that means I can now use Logic to quantize, to swing, and all the other things that I would do normally inside of Logic. Okay, so that's just group A. If I want to do group B, what I can do is go up to track here, select new with next MIDI channel, and that's going to give me access to group B. New sounds. And I can continue recording. And I can use the same setups. I can use the quantization. I can use the delays, all of that stuff. Okay, so that's how I record or use machine inside of a DAW. Um, this is specifically for Logic, the way I set it up, but you know some of the same principles apply. Okay, um, anytime that I want to uh, 
control any of machine's parameters, I have to get out of the MIDI control mode. So I just hit the shift control and that takes me out of the MIDI control mode. So now I have access to all of the, the parameters for machine. I can, you know, do the pitching. All the parameters are still there. Okay, so you just have to remember this setup. I will save it as a template and I'll help you work a little bit faster with machine going forward. So hopefully that tip helps you out. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to hit me up and I'll try to get to your questions as soon as possible. Um, you know, until next time, I think the next video we're going to do a little bit, something a little bit different for um, some other users out there that are doing different things. But um, until next time, West up, I'll holler at y'all. Peace.